Hey y'all, it's Krypton Critics. I'm here to review the 2003 film Ong Bak, uh, The Thai Warrior, aka Muay Thai Warrior. His film is directed. Uh, okay. Before I get into <laughs> people that are in it, uh, let me just say I'm not an expert in pronouncing uh, Thai names, so there is a high chance that I will mispronounce at least two of them. <laughs> Uh, the director is uh, Paracha uh, Pin uh, Pinka Pikeo. Uh, the, the main actor uh, is Tony Ja, who plays Ting. Uh, we have Pecha Tai uh, Monkolo, who plays Humlai, aka George. Uh, we have Pum Wari <laughs> Yoko Damo as. Moilek Social Show is like So So Show Pong Wille as Kam Tan and Chatapong Patama <laughs> Ankle as Saming. So now the only name that I am aware of. Uh, other than the director is Tony Jaw. Tony Jaw has been in films like Protector. I believe he's been in the On Back sequels, which are prequels. It's really weird. Uh, but yeah, he he is one of the great things in this movie. He, he doesn't have a, a lot of things that change about his character, but the way he pulls it off, the, the way he does action and the way he does, you know, the, uh, you know, steel, you know, the, 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 the lion-hearted, you know, uh, you know, uh, very stoic hero, he, he plays that very well, very reminiscent in the style of, like, uh, Jet Li or Bruce Lee, uh, I'm not saying they, uh, any of them are, uh, of the same skill set but they do have their own way they all have their own style Bruce Lee was all about you know very quick movements but also making it look like he was dancing at the same time Jet Li is all about straight body doing very you know sporadic kicks and punches and like turning turning away and doing the you know the other enemy Tony Jaw is all about uh, getting into a horse-like stance and beating the shit out of you with his elbows or knees, which is always awesome to see. That it's I know it's you know very in line with Muay Thai, but uh, just seeing him doing it is always awesome. Uh, this film takes place in uh, Thailand. Uh, it's supposed to be you know, in round modern times uh, when this movie came out, uh, there's nothing really that dates it, uh, you know, other than being in, you know, the past 20 years or so. Um, and Tony Jaws' character Ting is uh, a young man from the country. Uh, he gr grew up a very traditional lifestyle of learning Muay Thai, uh, being surrounded with the monk lifestyle. Uh, the opening is very well done. Seeing them climbing the tree is a very visceral image and it really shows, you know, just how they develop and I thought that was a really effective uh, thing to put into the beginning of the movie. Uh, he hears about his cousin over in um, Bangkok and, you know, he hears that the place isn't any good but we need to retrieve our uh, Buddhas had have been removed uh, by this supposedly by this drug dealer that went to Bangkok he's like well you can meet up with your cousin you can find it and everything will be awesome uh, it's a little more complicated than that uh, because Ting much like you know Captain America you know he is just a hero he sticks to his morals you, you can't shake him in that way uh when he goes over to 
Bangkok, you know, it's a very fish out of water experience for him. He's not he's not used to seeing slums and uh, you know this type of perversions that comes with the city. You know, uh, rampant crime. He, he's not used to seeing that type of thing. You know, having street fights and uh, just police not giving a shit, even though they're supposed to be everywhere. Uh, and he meets with his cousin, uh, who's Humlai, or uh, he likes to call himself George when he's in Bangkok and not around his cousin. Uh, he's just uh, pathetic. Uh, the, the character that were presented is pathetic. The performance is very well done. Sometimes it's uh, a bit over, you know, a bit ridiculous, but it, it makes it all fun and enjoyable for us watching. I would not want to work with this guy uh, because he'll sell you out in a minute. Uh, he sells out, you know, his cousin uh, just takes his money that was supposed to be for rent. Even though, you know, you should just take in your cousin that you haven't seen for almost your whole life. You should just let him in because, you know, that's fucking family. Uh, but he's like, oh, you have money? Then you can hang out with me. Just... Uh, Humlai also has a friend, uh, Moylek. Uh, apparently she's going off uh, to college very soon, but she just gets trapped in into, uh, you know, Humlai's bullshit of ripping people off. And once again, Humlai is very entertaining to watch. He is, uh, if, you know, if he didn't have, you know, the fun with this role and just being, like, a slight dipshit, you know, it, it, this movie overall w wouldn't be as engaging uh, if if it was, you know, then the only saving grace would be, like, the messages and the fighting. I, I like his inclusion. He definitely brings this movie up for me. Uh, but he, to me, you can't talk shit about the action. Uh, there's a great action set piece with some uh, Tuk Tuk uh, taxis. Uh, they're like thrown off of um, a, a ramp, uh, you know, elevated uh, stone bridge. That was a lot of fun to see. Uh, there's, there's one scene where we see uh, random guys at a street fight attack each other. This is when, you know, the first bet starts and uh, my boy Ting just fucks up somebody with one uh, kick to his chest and like, ooh. It was clean. Uh, he has he has to come back for you know crazy reasons, and he has to fight a guy with a spiked afro. Uh, this really douchey uh, Australian guy with like weird Al Yankovic hair that you know slaps a woman. You know, once you do that in a martial arts movie, you got you know our, our male hero. He has to look. And he has to do something about it. it, it that, that is, that's how the formula works <laughs> for martial arts films. Uh, I, I actually like it. I don't have anything against it, but it, it, I will say it is a, a trope, definitely. Uh, and he, he fights with this other guy who decides he's going to fight with a knife. Uh, he beats the shit out of him. Uh, they, they go up the stairs while people are supposed to be like, it's supposed to be like a bar, but. Shit just gets fucked up on this day. I can only imagine how much, how many times they had to re repair this place because, you know, people just come around in a circle while, you know, two, you know, masters of martial arts are just duking it out. I can only imagine what they had to do after that. Um, but yeah, it, 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 those scenes were crazy and there were a lot of fun to see. Uh, we get a hurrah moment where uh, people agree that that one guy he beat the fuck out of deserved it and they start throwing uh coins not like tossing them but just flicking them with their thumbs and you know giving him a payment for just doing right and doing it in the most awesome way possible uh we get to see tony jaw uh get away from some uh illegal casino dealers uh this is who uh, Moylek and Hamlai were playing with. Uh, they were trying to rip them off and they uh, chased them. That seems a lot of fun. Not a lot per se of 
you know hitting but there there is uh, plenty of hitting uh, but just seeing how the camera goes with them and seeing them jump seeing all of the dust fly and all of the market you know it, it's just beautiful and fun and silly it, it's great um, yeah uh, now the villain is this guy in a wheelchair who asked to have you know the little buzzer on his uh, larynx because he smokes too much he still smokes through the hole you know that's definitely something that some of them do which is unfortunate um, but he is a complete dick uh, he he's the one that wanted the Buddha's head from uh, you know Ting's village he's trying to make money off these Buddha's heads you know selling them which, you know, really puts in line of the message in this movie of, you know, Western culture and e city evil versus traditional country uh, lifestyle and Buddhism. Now, one line, even though it's kind of a throwaway, you know, really paints the villain who, you know, he sees Ting in action and immediately, you know... He, he ends up kidnapping uh, you know, Hum Lai and My Lack and you know Tony Ja comes to save them with legs on fire just beats the shit out of somebody that was pretty cool to see um, I was kind of uh, expecting when he like jumps into this bucket you know it's, it has water so he's able to put the fire out but I, I was just wondering what, what if that you know bucket was filled with more oil uh, <laughs> yeah it, that would have been a very uh interesting uh, movie to see you know him fighting with just his arms because his legs are gone and he just be he just still beats the shit out of people with his elbows uh and then he'll take the villain's uh wheelchair obviously <laughs> uh yeah uh we find out th this industry of uh you know uh calm Tan, the villain uh, his industry of having the Buddhist heads is very large. He has giant um, handmade statues, you know, the ones that are tall as buildings, like underneath the water. Some police take it away when, uh, you know, Ting bumps into it. That was really good visual of uh, just having something that big underwater and him reacting to it. You know, there's a lot of great visuals. Sometimes the editing seems a bit choppy, but you know everything that follows uh, from scene to scene is pretty seamless uh, I can't complain but what we actually have in frame and everything is well composed uh, also I like the uh, color palette where we're in like a room that's dimly lit it has uh, shades of yellow brown and black that's a very nice effect a lot of films uh, resort to uh, blue nothing wrong with that but it is nice to see, you know, what he, you know, what this director's style is. And I always like to see that cohes ah, cohesitivity. Is that even a word? I don't fucking care. But it's going in the review. <laughs> um, but yeah, basically this movie paints, you know, Western perversion and city life as bad. Even the villain is... Uh, an atheist who doesn't care about Buddhism which is kind of interesting because there are Buddhist atheists uh, you know just people you know people that don't uh, view Buddhism as you know a faith or e even consider Buddha anywhere near as like something close to a deity they just perceive him as the founder of you know the Four Noble Truths and whatnot and follow that philosophy and just sticks with the culture you don't have to you know make it you know you know a spiritual uh, type of process if you're following it uh, because you don't have to believe in any god you know it's all about the connection to peace and humanity and knowing uh, well for some people you know some for not others uh, atheists probably wouldn't think of you know ascending to nirvana uh, but one that is a traditionalist uh, Buddhist very likely will um, so it, it's a weird you know kind of mustache twirling thing I guess it's 
you know, definitely more attendant for a Thai audience that, you know, is more accustomed to Buddhist is right, non-Buddhist is wrong. It's similar to the way of how Christian films will put anything that could be construed as sin or doubting God or Jesus as automatically evil and, and just like, eh. Sometimes the messages, you know, it presents something very smart and something very much to think about. Like the commentary they have on greed and city and country life, that's usually always perfect but when it gets to the religious side it, it starts to muddy up some of its messages and it just grows more and more from the beginning to the end because the whole climax takes place where Tony Jaw has to defeat some guys that work for the villain and they're cutting up ahead of a uh, Buddha statue. The Buddha statue's head is fully cut off and actually crushes the villain that's how he dies uh spoiler uh the, the biggest spoiler in my mind is not the villain dying you know you can probably bet on that but the biggest spoiler uh is that humlai dies which is actually a really sad scene and it's pretty pretty decently emotion powerful um uh, and it, it it concludes the arc he has the I think he's the only one with a real arc and it is to see that he starts giving up his greed and his selfishness to care about others and his village that he abandoned and that's really fun oh not fun but very smart and uh well thought out yeah because it wasn't just immediate it's, it's a little too quick but still still good um <laughs> uh, the villain also has this uh, bodyguard, uh, Saming, who one part of the movie just gets juiced up and he, he just all tightens shit and he, he just, just takes blows and just just starts breaking our hero. I'm like, oh, damn, that's that's fucked up. But when he, when he doesn't have the juice anymore, he's fucking done. Uh, there's a lot of great scenes of the fighting when he is going over to find about the real uh, Ong Bak Buddhist statue head that he wants to return to his village. He does. And we do have a great hurrah. But the one thing um, that I kind of wondered what happened with that uh, plot line. There was this drug dealer in the movie who like is with this lady. I guess she's a prostitute. Uh, but she also smuggles his drugs, and he smuggles uh, like a fuck ton of cocaine, and he f makes forces her to snort it, you know, just smears that shit, you know, like, you know, <laughs> like like a plate of cake into her face, and she overdoses, you know, no shit. Uh, we don't see that lady anymore, so I can only assume. And, and, uh, and there's, I don't think there's any maintenance in this apartment that they're in because this apartment fucking sucks and it's really poor. So I can only assume that she's still there, dead. Maybe has some flies around here. Uh, maybe you know she's just slowly decomposing. Nobody's gonna clean her up. That's uh, the kind of depressing thing about. Um, <laughs> but uh, I just said thing about like, wait, we just dropped that. Uh, another character I had a lot of fun with. Uh, we don't see him for that much, but was uh, when Tony Jaw's uh, character Ting was having the street fights. Uh, there was this uh, announcer. It was this black guy who could speak a little bit of English, so I assuming he's uh, American. And you know, at some point he came over there. But he has a lot. He has a lot of fun lines. Uh, he's a complete douche, but he, you know, he is pretty funny. Uh, yeah. Um, now, this movie, I mentioned it before, has sequel prequels. I mean, they have, they call it On Back 2 and 3, but they take place many, many, many years before this movie takes place, and I don't feel like they connect pretty much in any way, other than they take place in Thailand and they have a hero that kicks ass. 
I feel like, you know, th there is story potential to do a legitimate sequel that takes place a few years and we have the same characters. Uh, I'm not sure if we were able to get uh, Tony Jaw back because, you know, he, if I remember right, he's taken more of a vow of non-violence and I don't think he even wants to pretend that he's doing violence on screen uh, because he's become more devoted to Buddhism. Fine. You know, more power to you, but... I do see story potential because this movie does work on itself. I don't think it needs any, it doesn't necessarily need any sequels, it is just a good movie by itself and it is fun, it is something as a think piece in cultural, uh, you know, cultural ties to Thailand, understanding how, you know, east and west of, you know, how cultures around them affect them, how city life, you know, just can corrupt sometimes. Uh, and overall, I give this movie a B plus. Tell me what you guys think. Uh, I know this movie has several DVD releases. Uh, some of them have versions where Humli doesn't fucking die, which I'm like, what? So which one's continuity and which one's not? But who, who cares? It, it's still fun. It's by the Critical Critics. You know, I love you. And yes, my hair is beautiful.